So the TikTok algorithm has been feeding me a lot of information just based off of the affordability of housing and how everything's changed over the last few years. Uh, I would say probably a couple decades, honestly. But that got me thinking and I wanted to show you that that's not entirely the case for all the cities. Now I would say the majority of the United States falls into this category, but I wanna take a minute to go over the different cities that you can go to and actually have some affordable housing. That way you can qualify for a mortgage, build some equity, rather than being stuck living paycheck to paycheck and not actually getting ahead in life. And on a side note, we ended up changing the layout for our living room and I'm actually liking it a lot. We got an easy view of our backyard and then we've got the TV on the back wall there. This painting over here is hiding where the TV used to be mounted, so I got a little bit of patchwork to do, but I'm actually pretty happy with it. And then outside is a muddy mess, so this one likes to run around and track all the mud inside. And this one's super relaxed. She does not cause much of a fuss. <clears throat> So housing has become a pretty controversial topic just with how affordability has gone, mortgage rates increasing, the sheer amount of inflation that's happening just over the last few years alone. Certain parts of the United States have become so unaffordable that people don't even have the possibility of buying a home just with their income compared to what the housing costs. It's really trapping people in that position to where they have to pay rent because it's cheaper than the actual mortgage that they could get on the house that they're living in. Now this isn't the case everywhere, however the articles that we're going to be checking out today are going to cover a few different cities that are more affordable to buy than it actually is to rent. I'm sure you're wondering what my credentials are as far as talking about this topic, and I actually am a realtor in the greater Cleveland area, so if you're starting to think about moving over this way, feel free to reach out to me. You can find all my contact information down in the description, but I am going to stick more towards the topic today, which is the affordability of housing in the United States. It's a bigger problem than I actually anticipated it being. I grew up in this market that isn't as expensive as some of the different parts in this country, so after seeing this, I came to the realization that I'm actually in the advantage. I grew up in Cleveland. I moved over to Toledo, which is even cheaper than Cleveland. And then I ended up moving back over this way. So I've spent my whole life living in these places that have an average price point of around 250,000, which is a very workable price range compared to the amount of income that you have the possibility to earn living in this area. So the first article that we're going to be going over is from redfin.com. This was published last year and Redfin is claiming that it is cheaper to buy a house rather than rent in the following cities. You've got Detroit, Philadelphia, Cleveland, and Houston. And Detroit has the largest discount of them all, which is comes in at 24%. And what it means by that is the average rent is about $1,700, whereas the average mortgage is sitting right around $1,300. So that's a difference of about $400 a month, and that can be extremely significant, especially when it comes to the budgeting aspect. And then you've got Philadelphia, which is following suit at about a 7% ownership discount, then Cleveland at a 4% discount, and then Houston at a 1% discount. Now, as far as some of the more unaffordable areas, homes can cost as much as 25% more to own rather than rent, which to me sounds like a pretty bad investment for the people who are buying the homes. However, the investors and the people who are buying homes in these areas, they're really gonna see a lot more inflation in the prices over time. So that's where their investment comes from rather than in areas that like I live where you're only probably going to see a little bit of inflation and it makes a little bit more sense as a rental market. One of the biggest factors that plays into the affordability of your mortgage is going to be your interest rate. Now, right now, rates are sitting right at 6%, so it's teetering on that scale of being very affordable for homes. However, if it goes up anymore, or if you don't have the greatest credit, it's going to increase your monthly payment significantly. If rates were to drop to, say, 5%, housing would actually become more affordable in that scenario, and mortgages would only be about 10% higher compared to the 25 that they're sitting at right now. Where we're sitting at right now is a lot better than it was last year in 2023, where rates were upwards of 8%. So things are definitely getting better, but I do not foresee them dropping down to that 3% where they were at during that pandemic era. Now the areas that are seeing these higher mortgage payments are on the coastal areas and what they're calling pandemic boom towns such as Sacramento, Las Vegas, Phoenix, and Austin. Now something extremely important to think about is that some of these areas that you're gonna be able to move to that have some more affordability aren't going to be extremely desirable. And the reason for that is going to be mainly dedicated to the weather and what they have to offer. So as far as the weather goes, in a lot of these areas, you're gonna experience all of the different seasons. You're gonna have summer, fall, winter, and spring. And honestly, coming from Cleveland, I really enjoy having the different seasons. However, I definitely understand the people who wanna live on the coast and experience the 360 days of sun and some extremely amazing attractions nearby. Now, I think there is a give and take if you wanna to move to some of these areas. All of the ones that I have named that are more affordable to live in have great spots to live. 
Over in Cleveland in particular, you can get that urban feel if you go move to downtown itself or if you go to Ohio City or Tremont. If you want that relaxed suburban feel, you have the opportunity to do that with all of the surrounding areas of Cleveland surrounded by suburbs that range in different price points all the way from 200,000 all the way up to a million. And the other thing to note about that million is that one million here is going to buy you a lot more house than it's gonna buy you say in California. You're gonna be living in a 4,000 plus square foot house in an amazing area here for a million compared to California where that's almost even a starter home. Now the second article that we're gonna be observing explains more about Cleveland where they observed 338 cities and only 28 of them were coming back as cheaper to own than rent. Cleveland rents are up between eight and nine percent this year so it's only getting more expensive to rent whereas home ownership is dedicated strictly to what the mortgage rates are. Now living in Cleveland is about 44 percent cheaper than the national average and it ranks really well within that list of 28 cities coming in at number five. Ahead of it, you're gonna find Detroit, Memphis, Baltimore, and Philadelphia. Further past Cleveland, you've got Toledo and Akron. So if you start to think about it, a lot of the bigger cities in Ohio are extremely affordable compared to a lot of the different cities in the United States. So let's take a look on Zillow and see how things have changed throughout time and see if this stuff is still accurate today. Excuse my obnoxious keyboard that I have to type with. So we're pulling up Zillow right now just to check out the different types of houses that you can afford in these areas. So we're gonna use where I currently live, which is North Olmstead. And let's grab something around the average price point. Let's say 315, that seems like a good spot to be. So if you were to buy this house, Zillow has some pretty accurate mortgage calculators just based on the different areas that we're in. So let's see here, we've got your taxes and there's your monthly calculator. So right now Cuyahoga County is pretty expensive as far as taxes go. If you go out into Lorraine, Medina, Summit, you're gonna have a lot cheaper taxes but if you land in Cuyahoga, it is more expensive. So principal and interest, let's see here. We got home price, 314,000. Let's say we're giving them the asking price. The down payment, we can get as low as 5% in most cases. So we're saying we gotta put 15% down, or 15,000 down. And we're getting a 30 year fixed at 6.6% .6 interest, which is right around where we're landing right now for most of my clients that I'm helping buy houses. You're gonna have mortgage insurance because you're not putting 20% down, but you're getting a lower down payment, keep in mind. Your property taxes are going to be 6,298 a year, which is 525 a month. You're not gonna have HOA fees on this one and your utilities are going to be separate. So keep that in mind, you are going to have to keep up with maintenance and utilities on these houses. So it's going to be on top of the monthly mortgage. So right now, the monthly payment estimate is sitting right around 2752. Now, I don't think this one's going to work out because I'm pretty confident it's going to be cheaper to rent this house rather than buy it as of right now. So Rentometer is what I use as a landlord to determine what the market value is for houses as far as rent goes when I'm assessing what they're worth. So we put in the address, we're gonna go, this one was three bedrooms, three bathrooms, three bedrooms, three bathrooms. So it looks like rent is coming in right around $2,000 for this house. So in this case, it would be cheaper to rent than buy the house. Let's see if we can find something that makes more sense as far as buying. Let's try say a 215. So it's a decent little house over in North Olmstead. looks like it's been renovated. Uh, we'll go scroll down, check out what the mortgage is gonna cost per month. We've got, let's see what 5% does. Nope, not $5, so let's do 5%. $10,000 down payment, 30 year fixed at, we'll call it 6.6% .6 like the other one. You are gonna have mortgage insurance every month. So this one's landing at 1800. Let's see what it comes in for, what the rent would cost for this house. Three bedroom, two bathroom, similar to the other one. Rent's coming in right at $2,000. So here it is actually cheaper to buy a $215,000 house. Now let's see what would happen if we were to make this a 20% down payment. So you got 6.6%, 20% down payment on 314,000 is going to be 
no mortgage insurance so that knocks that off property taxes are still going to be the same home insurance you're going to have to pay i think it's going to be around let's call it 850 a year because that's more like what I'm paying right now for my house. So we're sitting right around 2,200 if you put that 20% down. However, you have to save that amount of money to get it closer to what your monthly mortgage is gonna be as far as rent goes. It's still a little bit more, but keep in mind that you are going to be building equity with this. As you go over time, the mortgage is gonna get paid down. You're also gonna have a little bit of inflation as well. So I always recommend to people who are thinking about buying a house, spend five years in the house and then you're gonna get a bigger return back. If you're only spending like one to three in it, you're probably gonna break even if you're lucky. If you have to eat sell within that year, you're probably gonna lose money. So that gives you a pretty good idea as far as what a more average price point would land at. Now let's see something that's a little bit higher. I wanna see, say, 500k um, right now there are none listed in North Olmstead so I'm going to move over to let's say Westlake so we got a five hundred thousand dollar house right over here this one is four bedrooms three bathrooms and it's four thousand square feet like I said in Cleveland you're gonna get a lot more house for your money but if you were to put your 20% down you're gonna land right around a thirty eight hundred dollar payment and let's see if we can find a similar house that's right around 4,000 square feet for rent. Now let's see what rentometer has to say, but I think it's gonna be way low for Westlake. I don't think it's gonna be very close to what it actually is. So rentometer is saying that your rent's gonna land right around 3,100 bucks, which is still cheaper than buying this $500,000 house. However, I wanna double check and see what some of these other houses are renting for. Uh, let's see if we can find one very similar that's in this neighborhood that's got the beautiful exterior and something that is really well done as far as houses go so let's see here for rent let's do four plus bedrooms we need three bathrooms to match that one uh we got two thousand that's a newer house it looks pretty good in westlake ohio still so we're landing under that rent but the inside's not nearly as updated as it could be. It's all beige. I mean, it's a pretty typical house as far as what you're gonna get as a rental. Let's see what this 5.2 is. So this one's similar as far as beds and baths go, but you're getting a whole 1,500 extra square feet and you got a three car garage on this one. This house is massive. It's sitting on a pretty private lot. It's very outdated inside, but that's still coming in over $1,000 a month more than what your mortgage would be on that $500,000 house in Westlake if you were to buy it. So realistically in Cleveland, depending on the type of house you're buying and what your down payment is, it is actually cheaper to buy a house than rent. But if you're doing a low down payment, which isn't uncommon, you're gonna be higher than that renting point. So realistically, it's all about what your goals are and what you're trying to accomplish. If you need some help trying to figure out exactly what you wanna do, feel free to reach out to me. I'm gonna have different programs that are going to make your life a lot easier, whether you're moving here in nine weeks or nine months. And if you are wanting to find out more about this Cleveland market, check out my channel. I've got a ton of different videos explaining the different suburbs and the different cities that you can live in, depending on what type of lifestyle you wanna experience. There's just so much here to offer. Sure, we don't get that 360 days of sun, but we do experience all the different seasons and they are absolutely beautiful to see the leaves change throughout the year and the snow hit the ground and then the sun in the summer. It's just overall a great experience as far as the weather goes in my opinion, but that's because I like the cold and I like the warm. So I'm getting the best of all worlds rather than just being stuck with the warm all the time. So I hope this video helps. If you find yourself down in the description trying to reach out to me or maybe checking out some of my other social media, definitely click that like button before you go because it's gonna help me out a lot. Also, make sure you subscribe to keep up with everything that's going on in the greater Cleveland area. With all that being said, I'm gonna leave the video there. I'll catch you in the next one.